Hello everybody, welcome back after a short abbreviated break to the EU contender scene here in week three, day two. I'm I Hold Shift, joined back once again with Kenobi and Pulsible. And we've got ourselves quite a pivotal matchup here. We previously saw two, three, and two teams, but now as we go into our second set, gentlemen, we've got ourselves inbred sitting at five and oh, and we've got the side of, pardon me, UNS Gaming sitting at four and one. And uh, Pulsible, at this point in time, now that we're getting a little bit later into the season, we're starting to see some of these high tier matchups we're expecting to see that threshold that we we're talking about with the goats previously start to be executed at a more high level oh yeah and it's really going to come down to this is sort of one of those uh make or break matches it's, it's not quite make or break but it's very like you said pivotal for both these teams these are both uh grandmaster averaging teams these are teams that are looking for those playoffs they are hungry for it and how you face up against other grandmaster teams is really what determines who makes playoffs and who does not. How you deal with these nuances of GOATs that we get at the higher levels, mm. where the Zarya bubbles are going, how well is the D.Va tracking, things like these are going to determine who's going to move into next week uh, and the weeks beyond looking really clean and who's going to be struggling to stay in that playoff picture. And I think putting into perspective a little bit the map records here, you know, 5-0, and oh, it's a very good record. You're undefeated as well. But 4-1 and one is a little, little bit scarier because if you lose at 4-1, and one, you're going to go to 4-2 and two and 4-2. and two. two losses is that very scary position where you might have to play in week 11 or might not get into play at all. And if you're undefeated into week 6, into week 4 rather, that's very good as well because you have kind of a little bit of a leeway to go. You just, you don't really have that loss yet, so there's not a lot of pressure on you, but Having that second loss is going to be very pivotal uh, for UNS Gaming if they end up losing it. Yeah, and you talk about that for UNS Gaming, but I want to kind of focus more about inbreds really quickly because we see this every so often, especially in the open division where you really are truly getting these younger players a lot of experience. Let's talk for a second about Yikids, notably uh, listed as their potential Farah player, a 14-year-old coming through again on an undefeated team. That's got to feel pretty good for an up-and-coming gamer, Paul. Oh yeah, gotta love, uh, gotta love seeing the the young talent get in here. You know, your sugar freeze, your patapans, that kind of <laughs> talent. I, I'm I'm hoping he'll pop off today, but who knows? We may just see him on the brig all day. Well, I mean, if someone's got to hold down that role, I don't Someone know about you, Kenobi, but that's typically me when I play ranked. Like, okay, we need a Brigida, just let shift do it. I don't know about yeah. you, I, I, and, and I mean with. With the nerfs that Brigitte has had, even, you know, or nerfs, quote unquote, you know, some people say that it's kind of um, a buff to her Inspire, but she does have the shield bash damage, which is getting knocked down. But in really in high ranked play, it doesn't matter that much. As long as you're getting a stun and the Discord orb is falling, you're going to probably blow up that target anyways. Mm. So if we are going to be seeing the Brigitte, it's still going to be, you know, having a lot of value. You have 20 more healing with Inspire. That's a lot. That's probably saving most of your teammates you know your zenyatas can't get one shot anymore so someone does have to do it you know we see for meta athena you know who are you is just playing brigitte because that's just how good that hero is so if they're going to be playing this more goat centric comps i expect him to probably stay on that brigitte but you know maybe they'll mix it up farah does have her spot in the meta you know you can play her on certain maps you know numbani you can play her on, on defense or on offense as well you can play her on nepal sometimes so it could yeah. happen but i think goats is still a very good composition and well, with and you that know, we're... Brigitte change, Paul, I, I just wanted to hit really quickly. I mean, we talked sure, about no this worries. last game, but that, that frontline versus frontline matchup, that Reinhardt versus Reinhardt becomes that much more pivotal because you don't have that guaranteed shield bash to go through the particle barrier that Reinhardt puts up. Absolutely. With the Brig nerfs coming in, uh, it, we, we talk about GOATs. I, I mentioned this last series as a composition that's really good at enabling the main tank. Well, it's sort of, it's sort of, the brig changes are very bittersweet, right? Because it's harder for a Brigida to enable their main tank now, but your own main tank doesn't have to deal with the pressure from the other team's brig now, right? So it's, it's a slightly different style of main play. You can't guarantee those earth shatters from the Reinhardt anymore with the brig stun. So it really does come down more to a skill matchup at these higher levels. Who can land those shatters? Who can trick the other Reinhardt into suboptimal positionings? Who can bait them out and uh, get those charge picks? So the Reinhardt, the main tank matchup, pivotal as always. So while I do agree that you can, like, it's not as easy. It's not an easy bait combo anymore with the Brigitte where you sure. can just, like, shield bash through shield. You can still walk through the particle barrier, right? So really now, what you're going to be looking for is Brigitte to just go a, into the shield. You can st through the shield and shield bash still. Maybe give that Brigitte your bubble and then just get the easy bait combo that way. It's not as easy as, you know, just 
Sure. Hit, hit, just hit the stun right through the shield at first, but there is going to be a nuance to it now, but not that there was before. So I think that's going to be something to look out for too. If they're going to be able to play around the Brigitte, flanking around and you know bashing the Reinhardt, it's still going to do a ton of damage, and you're still going to have the ability to hit that shatter. It's just a bit yeah. riskier now, right? It, it is. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> pick your neck out a little bit more. It's, that again, way. it's not an easy bait combo anymore. You have yeah, to right. actually think about what you're doing. You have to save yeah. some resources to try and get that Brigitte to go through the shield. Yeah, and the, the risk reward was always kind of there, but yeah, I think you guys hit it on the head, the fact that it's become that much more exponentially uh, more dangerous, but obviously the reward is that much more merited. Now, we were talking previously in the last game, if you missed out about how Doomfist was one of those characters that could potentially come out previously, most notably, to really kind of break apart this current, you know, 3-3 combination. Now that Doomfist has been changed a little bit, as we go to what looks to be Bassan, are there any kind of outlying damage picks or kind of off we'll call meta picks to maybe possibly break apart this 3-3 three, three, Paul you know I'm gonna go back to that Pharah we were talking about you know I feel like Pharah and uh sometimes Sombra are honestly May. the only two oh yeah May that's a good point as well yeah. yeah those three are really the three DPS that can still hold their own if you're playing around them properly but it's more than just getting a it's not a hard counter right you can't right. just throw a Pharah or a Mei or a Sombra into the game and rely on them to hard counter the GOAT's composition. You need to really understand how to play around those heroes properly. Kenobi, any uh, last heroes that worth mentioning before no, we jump I, in the I game? mentioned my Mei. I think Mei, especially on like mecha base, is a, a really good pick. All right. Yeah. Well, it will be Busan first and foremost. We'll go ahead and throw this over to our boys, Bemi and Baby Man Panda. Uh, take it away, friends. Have a good one. Thank you very much, Shift. Well, it's 4-0 for both of these teams. Looking pretty strong here. And both coming together just sort of for Open Division right now. How are you doing today, Panda? We're jumping into Busan. You feeling good about this? I'm feeling pretty darn good about this. I love Busan as the new control map in Overwatch has come to be a staple in Contenders and now in Open Division. Going to see how these two teams fare out. The Deaths set it up wonderfully, how these teams are going to be faring out in the Goats v. Goats matchup. Uh, you touched up on it as well. The uh, the matchups for these teams, one's 5-0, one is 4-1, so no team really wants to walk away with a loss here. They're going to be setting up each other's Brigettas prominently. I like how Kenobi put this up on the desk. Comes down to this Reinhardt v. Reinhardt duel. Uh, Dylan versus Yabi Hodian, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Who can get the upper hand and land that upper shield bash done for the Brigetta? Absolutely agree. The main tanks are very pivotal in this moment to see who gets it down, but the Discord are looking good on target prioritization, and your boy, Den, is going to go down very, very quickly, and this is pretty much indicating that this team fight is going to go over right away to the side of the inbreds, and they are just going to go ahead and take this point right away the moment they touch it. Yeah, inbreds landed a really good Discord orb. One thing that you can definitely tell, it's not by much, but the Zenyatta for inbreds is slightly ahead of the Zenyatta of the other half. So now they're going to be able to get control, get up on this rally charge. It's going to put a nice little armor underneath the shieldings of both the Zarya and the Zenyatta. Give them a nice little extra oomph behind the damage that comes out to both these players. Rally right there. The Earthshare not going to find much. And Dylan will go down right away. But Sile will be able to follow up and get a double kill of their own. Looking pretty strong here. They're going to be able to get a good amount of stun. They're still pushing this all the way to spawn. A little aggressive, but looking like they're still staying strong together as a team. Got a little bit of the alt economy advantage there, though, for Untamed Spirit. And that's what it's all about, right? Once you do have the initial uh, ultimate economy advantage and the point contention, you can play these cheeky styles. You can see Sky here on the front line. He is just hanging out with this Graviton Surge. The enemy team uh, of UNS are walking forward. They're probably not going to be expecting this, especially as they're going to be setting themselves up. Fully Torque does have the Transcendence, so they will be prepared to defend themselves. It got eaten! Yeah. Oh no, yeah, it got eaten indeed. That is a grab gone, and there's the grab coming in for the other side. Self-destruct sequence, there's a the Transcendence. Able to save it just in the nick of time. Thanks, praise to Fully Torque as UNS is able to push on through, but they still need to get this main tank down. Dylan, with that heal orb, they're trying to keep this main tank alive. They're falling back, pushing back to point, not gonna try to be aggressive. The sound bear coming in, Pog, real quick, nicely done, and they are able to zone it out, get, able to get Bunny. The shield bash stun is gone for them, and this is looking pretty strong right now for the side of Inbreds as they are just able to fall back, nicely done, not giving into the pressure, just sort of getting a little bit of elbow room and letting them come to them. 
The Sanctuary on Busan can be tricky. You can play your pillars, and that's exactly what Inbred said. They played their spacing and the map uh, geometry perfectly around the ultimates that they still had left through Chalky Milk Sound Barrier and the armor that, uh, that Yikids ended up uh, supplementing at the end of that team fight. They're setting themselves up for a last team fight scenario, 97%. Now UNS, they have to speed off to the point. Oh, UNS has to speed on the point. They will make it a lot easier with that grab. We'll see if they're able to follow up. The self destruct sequence not to come in. Thanks to the power of Nick. Is it going to allow them to keep them alive for a little bit longer? Transcendence in response, though, coming in from Tor. Self destruct sequence able to get the DMAC onto Endura, Endurio, and they will be able to finally switch over the point. No, 100, 0 to 100, real quick. And that's one of the things in this matchup that you have to be aware of. When that speed boost comes through from your Lucio and the entire GOATS just runs towards you, you have to be prepared for that. And in Brad's, they weren't necessarily all too in the right position to deal with that uh, that Graviton surge that came out uh, at the beginning of that fight from Dennis, catching everybody on the wall, and then they had to kind of sporadically folly back onto the point. They didn't have the man advantage at the end of that. They will have the ult advantage, though. Dylan has been a standout with these shatters. Has to do it once more with the armor coming through to forget the ones again. Yeah, that rally is going to make things strong. The Earth Shatter as well coming in is catching a couple of people. We'll see if there's any fall up there, though, not to be the case. The South Destruct sequence, though! Oh my goodness, that's going to be the triple kill right there, and that's pretty much got to be the point for Inbreds right at the moment. They are going to have to get rid of that Diva real quick, but there is the Wick going down, and there might not be enough time to contest. It doesn't seem to be the case. Sanctuary is going over to the Inbreds. Yeah, the team fight was won so decisively that Imbrez were able to get the point flip and the contention and the round of Sanctuary. In fact, it always comes down to those minor moments in the Reinhardt v. Reinhardt battle. Imbrez is doing a fantastic job of showcasing that. Dylan coming up on the upper hand of UNS's Reinhardt and really displacing him in the final bits of that team fight really opened up Endero's uh, self-destruct to find three. Reinhardt was one of the last to die in that, in, in that team fight for UNS. It might have to uh, dissolve that situation just by grouping up and playing more coherently. Now, this is more of a spectacle here. I was move over to Mecha Base. Dennis is actually going to be giving up the D.Va, going over to the May. This has been a little bit more average scene these days on this current patch because May is just very strong and playing around the walls in your own ice wall. To displace a few members of the Ghost composition can really give you the upper hand as they fight over this high ground. Certainly, in bigger maps, it does provide this zoning. You're absolutely right, and we're going to see how that works out for Dennis right now. Could be just the push that they need to finally get a point on their side of the map for UNS. We'll see how this works out for them. There's the ice wall right there. It does catch them a little bit off guard, but nothing too big. Does zone out the Reinhardt for a second, but they are able to still get Den. Not a lot of protection. They're just going out there right in the opening, and they use the ice wall to fall back, but there's not much to fall back from. They do get Dylan, the main take of the side of inbreds but it doesn't seem to be the case the point's still going over to them the wall was a little hesitant at the beginning of that fight dennis did find two but the speed boost wasn't there from their lucio to aggress on to those members good bubble placement that it was no bird and uh yeah but yo i'm just gonna keep choking over that i'm just gonna call him the reinhardt play because <laughs> i think that's he's very dead. Name dad we'll just call him dad i like that because at the end of the day they got ended up displaced and playing really well as a tank duo and coordinated well. They will have a series of ultimates. More importantly, that transcendence to fight against this Gravitron Surge. If they stay alive, they won't. Huge grab as Dylan is just going to rush in there. I kind of like the fact that they didn't drop the ultimates right away. Uh, they did feed into a little bit of inbreds, but I mean, they do have stuff to hold on now and they could fight back this ultimate economy that they're about to go up against. It's very important for inbreds there too. I mean, they only use the Graviton Surge and they're able to sit comfortably on this high ground and they're going to have another series of tank ultimates. More importantly, Dylan's Earth Shatter. If they can displace the entire team of UNS once again, they'll have the upper hand. We'll see how it works. And Dylan's able to find Den. That's roughly about it. Transcend is coming into play from fully Torque, but this is not going to be able to stop in time for the self-destruct sequence. But it seems everybody is shielded and safe in their own means. Right now, they still have a bunch of going on. They're trying to find maybe an opening for that Blizzard, see if they can get the stun, or maybe just get that grab going. But it looks like they're able to get the grab going in on the side of the Inbred. The Ice Wall is coming in. Nicely done. Absolutely. Sound barrier as well. Just to run out the gates, fully healed and everything. Bunny able to get a double kill. And this looks like it's going to be able to get, have a point right there. They still have to go through a little bit more healing, but they're doing nicely done. They're sticking together, not trying to zone out each other. Fully Torque does go down, but Sile and the D-Mech do come in, and they finally get everybody in a point. We'll be going on over to the side of UNS. UNS, Dennis, fantastic wall, the Graviton Surge. It caught out a few key members of Inbreds as they try to push towards the wall, and by that point, 
It's just a, a couple cleave damage away with Bunny and uh, Den there. They're able to clean up on those prominently and get the point flip without many ultimates invested. To be able to have this rally and the Blizzard, more importantly, to combo along with this grab could be huge for this defense. Could be huge indeed, but right now the grab is coming into play and Grimbrad, and they're dropping the Blizzard along with it. It gets it to group up everybody, make sure that they can get them. Nicely done. They are going to win the team fight very quickly, and they're already you've seen just the rest of the team, uh, whatever can, just tactically SD, and just now they're getting ready to regroup. But the alt economy is still pretty 50 50 right now. Yeah, still a little 50 50. 93% uh, still on the board for Inbright. So if they win one more team fight decisively, it could be like Sanctuary uh, and they could take this round. Yeah. But the defenders are playing pretty composed so far, playing around the ultimate push that they have. Den's going to have this Earth Shadow. He stays alive, gets the heals. Could be massive. Yeah, and the May is so huge once you have that point because the Ice Walls just kind of allow you to sort of dictate where the fight goes and looking pretty strong. Just heading on over to the point in Brad seeing if they can hint it. There's the grab coming in, Earthshire coming in as well. self to Oh, the Ice Wall once again just making things a little bit awkward for the side of Imbrads and just making things so strong. This May is looking great. Also getting the stun. The rally does come in from the break though on the side of Imbrads, but the sound barrier response transcends it in too. And these are a trade back and forth, and Dennis is probably waiting for a moment to drop that blizzard, and here it is right now. And they are going to be able to freeze, grab them, and looks pretty strong. If they can just get Dylan, that would be great, but unfortunately not to be the case. Also, almost getting a pin, but they do manage to bring him down. Den is able to get that D-mech and also the kill onto the main tank. It looks like they are still going to hold on strong. Very close fight, but it looks like it is going to go into the favor of uh, UNS Panda. This team fight lasted way too long. UNS have been holding on to this team fight for a hot minute, and Inbreds have been fighting a lost fight for quite some time. They haven't had the man advantage. They're investing ultimates almost in a lost fight until that Earth Shatter comes down. Dylan trying to get this team fight back in his team's favor. Ooh, and the Earth is not going to go down on the side of Dan. It just uh, unfortunately just didn't happen to come in the nick of time, and now. Looks like Inbreds are just going to have a hard time. The Air Shadow response not going to be great. Huge grab, but there's the Ice Wall. Are they going to be able to follow up, though? They do manage to get funny, but it's not going to be much. Enderio is going to be getting demixed, and Sile goes down. They are just trickling in, but it's one by one. There's not much of the team left. It is finally going to be able to regroup. Den is able to get the kill, and it looks like they're dropping the Blizzard just to zone out as much as they can. It is a huge point after all, but the Wick will go down. We do have a game on our hands, Panda. Yeah, we're about to go to downtown to finally see where these two teams fare on control. And if you're not entertained by these two teams duking it out here on Mecha Base, I don't know what is. That was Are a you very not close matchup. I mean, at the end of the day, it, Inbreds, they were still investing so much into a fight when they could have just regrouped. I know it sounds very foreheadish when you just lay it out like that, but it, that's what it was. They were just continuously throwing each other in. They didn't see how much control meter was over on the side of UNS, and they could have just regrouped with the ultimates they had. Dylan found three with the Earth Shadow, but there was no follow-up. Very true. And then Sile found three with the Graviton Surge, almost four actually on the wall. It was a great Graviton, but there was no follow-up. The entire team of UNS played so composed. The supports, Lyalor and Foley Torque hand in hand using the sound barrier and the transcendence one after another to keep the team alive. And in the upper hand of the man advantage warfare was a big play. As we go to downtown, the matchup stays the same. Goats be goats all day. Goats be goats all day. And Dennis back onto the Zarya as opposed to the May. And we'll see how this works out for them. The team fight just going in. And Den goes down right away. Uh, that's something that just like inverts have been consistent about every time It's just making sure that they get this main tank the target prioritization very very strong and they will go ahead and take this point right away and this is what we saw every time is just them able to get this point very very early by getting the Reinhardt a little bit of a different play there. What's most important is how the Zarya's played out there. Dennis came in there playing a little bit too aggressively through the barrier on to Den a little bit too early while Sile waited for Dylan to press forward and use the projected barrier not only for charge, but to keep his Reinhardt alive mid-push, and that gives him the upper hand and the control point. So a lot of upper hand advantage right now, and we'll see how this works out for them. Sile does go down. Dennis is able to find a good opening, and there it is. Dylan, the pressure going now, right now, and this. They just charge right on through. Just sort of just a good rally, and allowing them to have that health just allows them to switch over the point. They are getting this point earlier and earlier, Panda. Yeah, good decisive fight there underneath the armor that Bunny was providing. Speed boost coming through from Lylor and good vanilla overwatch because they didn't really invest anything besides the rally. Good initiation once they found the pick. Dennis has a good bunch of charge there on that Zarya, so he's gonna have the Graviton Surge, and they have the Transcendence to fare against Sion once he has his So, Dylan with his Earth Shatter walking forward gets immediately blocked, and now Inbreds looks for their next O. 
And yeah, what is their opening right now? It's maybe Sile dropping in that grab, but they gotta be careful because Nober could easily just eat this or just any alt could respond to it very quickly. They could bait out Holy Twerks, Vincennes and make sure that it's protected. They could drop the rally right now. There's a grab coming in off the high ground and coming in right now. That's super strong. Self-destruct sequence coming in back and forth. They may get Dylan and that's very unfortunate for the side of the Inverts. They are able to take the main tank out and there's a huge Earth Shatter as well. Looking great for the side of UNS as they are able to take him out one by one and holding on to this point. Dropped a couple of balls but managed to charge up quite a few and they're still keeping this pretty respectable right now. Yeah, and that's that composed play that we started seeing at the, uh, the, I guess the tail end of Mecha Base from UNS. Yeah. The support play all together, fully torqued with a proper transcendence there. It's already 60% to his next one and all together with the speed boost and the healing aura of the Inspire the Bunny's been providing for the team of UNS. They were able to keep composed and stay up for, on the upper hand of that team fight. As you can see now, Inbred rushed on the point with a sound barrier. Sound barrier versus Rally. Who goes in? And Rally's coming in right after the sound barrier, but the sound barrier right in response as well is almost mirror for mirror right now, Panda, as they're going back and forth right now, seeing if they can get this main take. Den has been protected really nicely. Target prioritization and protection is really strong. Earth Shatter coming in, not going to be strong, and a great Rally in response. self suck sequence coming in, and that Earth Shatter is going to be able to find Dennis, and that's not good. The bubbles were kind of huge, allowing that charge up for the Zarya because they're able to get that long range DPS attack. The, t the tank will go down the side of UNS as well. And this is looking pretty strong back and forth. The overtime is coming in. At this point, it looks like the point will be flipped over. And if this will be another fight the UNS has to go through. They might want to try to stop feeding right now. So that way their alts don't get uh, outnumbered. And, and this is where we see teams really struggle, right? Uh, this time on the side of UNS, they were throwing ultimates into a fight where the enemy team were throwing other ultimates. They're at 99%. UNS could have backed off, regrouped with their ultimates and recontested. Now they find themselves have to get the ultimates back so that way they can aggress back onto the point. On the other hand, inbreds stayed in the composed area their supports more or less they're about to have the transcendence in the sound barrier more importantly dylan with this earth shatter can really set himself up in the last team fight scenario oh my god yeah absolutely they can with the earth shatter like that that's so huge able to get a kill off the top with that as well and right now they're just going to stagger this kill and this is going to be huge okay what do they need to do right now on uns to take this back right now panda the uns need to catch them off guard they need exactly what they did in on sanctuary in that last team fight scenario is just to speed past the enemy reinhardt of uh dylan and just tried to get as much as possible sile on the other hand will have the graviton search to negate as much as that as possible if fully gets a little bit more heals off in the entryway to this point and get the transcendence off could be be, be the pivotal moment to set up no bird self-destruct to turn the fight back in uns's favor no bird self-destruct can you pull it through for your team and there's a transcendence as well earth shatter getting ready there's a grab it's pretty huge self-destructing when coming in the tank out the tank oh my god it's gonna be huge the double kill is gonna be there and Mario, oh my goodness this could be spelling the end of this map of any chance for uns to take this back there's no bird trying their best just to contest it long enough but the wick will go down and that is the two one victory right there uh, unless it's a best of five i don't remember this no no it's best not a best of, of five don't worry just, about it just, just making sure but there we go that is going to be the two one victory over for the side of inbreds turning it back around panda yeah they, they wonderfully done there able to get back into that mental capacity that we know and love overwatch to really push these high stakes matchups don't forget about how high rank both of these teams are really pushing each True. other to the brink and that's what you definitely saw there on control is it's not the most flexible matchup in this day and age with uh, the most popular uh, composition being goats. But of course, we got to see a lot of versatile play from a multitude of players. Even that may coming on a mecha base was a spectacle to see. But inbreds at the end of the day, they found the upper hand. And more importantly, they found the more composed play. Like I said, Dylan's Earth Shatter setting that uh, that last team fight scenario up on uh, downtown was absolutely huge for inbreds because they had both support ultimates to play around. UNS, they invested way too many ultimates into a uh, team fight that was already lost. Uh, and they could have came back and won it with the ultimates that they had. Yeah. On the other hand, UNS, uh, that transcendence was just a moment too shy. If that transcendence came around just a little bit earlier from Foley Torch, probably would have kept the Reinhardt alive and then could have shielded off that self-destruct. Probably would have saw a different fight. But as we load into Dorado here, Bemi, things could change because the high ground could dictate how Goats gets played around, could see more Winston, could be more D.Va. All together, could end up seeing some DPS. DPS as well would be a, a very welcoming change, and I'm already 
seen some potential change, but uh, all right, let's let's just talk about this right now. We saw this coming in. All right, if we're going to see goats, uh, which is looking like it's happening from the side of inbreds, can you go into a little more detail as why is that Reinhardt so important to target or protect? Well, Reinhardt's just so important because he's he's basically your your biggest damage dealer, right? Because you get so up in his face, you just try to cleave as much as possible unarmored at 75 per cleave and that and that hits in a big radius until your zarya gets enough charge by way of getting that particle barrier off for the cleanse of your reinhardt is your second biggest damage dealer setting up that reinhardt keeping him alive around the payload and where high ground isn't as oriented can definitely set your team up for a greater deal of success and why we see goats so great to this very day on the other foot though if the high ground becomes i guess too uh, a bigger flavor for these teams to try to contest. We'll just see the Reinhardt go over to the Winston, create a little bit more backline pressure, and kind of control that high ground with the Diva player. Uh, kind of closer to that old dive meta uh, where the Zarya is then that DPS style that's just hanging out on the backline, trying to keep the supports alive around the payload. Uh, and oh, yeah. The tanks just kind of hang out on the high ground, contesting it all the time, looking for their pounce opportunity. But it, again, in this day and age, with Brigetta pairing with Reinhardt, that Inspire change on this current patch, you almost won't see it just because Reinhardt has seen that reboot with Brigetta in game. Look at this aggressive hold coming out for the side of inbreds already. This is what Ghost has brought us to. You can play this closely because you can just speed boost and get another contest here on Escort. Well, forget about the igloo. We're just going straight to Goat's Panda as we're just about to see how this works out for them. Already the high ground, just trying to get contested by Nobird, but already this corner is pretty much getting well owned by the side of inbreds but they might not want to take this fight to spawn on attack spawn specifically too close as they could just basically give them too much feeding into alt to folly back already not giving them too much relaxation and making sure that endero still has their mech onto it now we're about to see them fight in this courtyard area and who what do you want do you still want them to prioritize the reinhardt or something different and sometimes you just have to really, and when it comes to the Goats v Goats matchup and the Reinhardt v Reinhardt duel, you can't back down from the fight. You have to trust that your Zarya will give you that particle barrier promptly, but Sile with an early Graviton Surge gets the entire team on the payload. Oh, but the Earth Shatter retaliation though is still going back and forth, the double double kills, but there's the Earth Shatter coming in from Dylan, and they're able to follow up, but there's the Transcendence coming in from Fully Torque, keeps some people alive, but Dylan's able to zone them out from that all, and my goodness gracious, that is going to be pretty much everybody gone, and they are just going, Inbreds are just going to hold on to this point quite nicely. Really? composed play they knew when to back off there's another good key component of goats v goats when you know it when to disengage if you're down in heels when you know you need to get back up on the cooldown management it doesn't always come down to the ult economy it also comes down to knowing when you do have that amp down ability for your lucio or you actually have the shield bash up before you forget it comes down to so many different things and sal showing us as much charge as he had getting the upper hand with an early graviton surge See how it goes for them right now as we're seeing the rally come out from the side of Inbreds as well. Once again, just sort of making, oh my gosh, just a, just a big old pot of destruction as they are just going to take out everybody. Looking solid with those pins, the charges, the missiles. My goodness, Panda, this just seems so overwhelming from Inbreds. What tactic do they need to do? Do they really just need to bring this to an alt fight? Well, UNS and Inbreds, they, they kind of turned that into a little cage match down there in the corner. That was kind of scary there. He turned into a minor slobber now. He turned dirty. Hey, for yes, they, they need to play the ultimate game, and that's exactly what they're doing. They have the Graviton Surge. They're about to have the Earth Shatter. They're about to have a full six pack of ultimates minus the Transcendence here. So about five slowly behind is fully torqued. But they need to find something with these ultimates to capitalize on the payload and find momentum on this escort map. Yeah, they really need to find some momentum. There is a grab coming in after the rally. Looking pretty strong, but the Transcendence with the self-destruct sequence isn't going to find anything. If those find Dylan, that's a great pick that you want to find. A huge Earth Shower to follow up as well. This is looking like the momentum that you were exactly talking about with Aviated Panda, as they're just going to push on through. And it looks like they're finally good to get this point. I don't see them contesting this right now, Inbreds. And some of you may say that they use four ultimates to capitalize on point A, but that is all you needed. They save the Transcendence. Foley Torque has that available for style that is going to have the Graviton Surge. If they can keep uh, Den's shield uh, stable enough to block off the self-destruct combo in the Graviton Surge, they will remain up on the momentum fair on the S4 map. It is so important when you're on the objective to keep that momentum pace going, to hold forward with the Ghost composition, but look at the defense. They're already putting you on the play with the grab. My gosh, with self-destruct sequence sound barrier, interesting call, and they get the double kill, and my goodness gracious, 
they they just really like this is an interesting tactic this is just seems like something that they want to use to just kill time on the time bank where's the thoughts going into this right now panda well inbreds did a fantastic thing they used the speed boost to shock him out with the sound barrier to initiate the the fight right and then they just threw the graviton surge on the cart where the defense matrix wasn't being held by bird and and the transcendence by fully torch just never came out and now the attacking team did the same thing they used the trend of uh, sound barrier just to aggress and they find dylan it's a good key pick they need to get this payload moving they do need to keep this payload moving. They will use that Zenyatta to the fullest ability to push that payload. As opposed to joining in the fight, the Discord Earth may be useful, but it looks like they're doing just fine right now. Taking on to that high ground with no bird, and this is looking great for them at the moment. Panda, I mean, at the moment, they're looking pretty strong. What do they need to make sure that they stay consistent with? What they need to make sure their target prioritization is? Well, that's exactly what they, what they did right, though. It, it, and that's just the good because Matt Dillon was caught a little bit off guard, didn't get caught up in the speed boost from Lyalor, so he got caught out of position. So he got run over. There's a good disengage coming off from Inbreds, but now they're back up. 6v6 here. Graviton surge from Dennis, however, and the self destruct. Grab across the wall. The self destruct not going to find anything, but there's an Earth Shatter that isn't going to find exactly what they need. But there's so much healing going on. But Fully Torque with the Transcendence does keep people alive. But they are trying to get Den so quickly. But Fully Torque able to turn that right around and get Dylan. But they do go down to Sile. The grab is going to come and try to get No Bird. And they do manage to also find Lylor as well. And that is going to be pretty much the team fight one for the side of Inbreds, and they're going to be able to hold on to it, just barely getting that second point. It's a story as old as time. His team's getting uh, held here as soon as the capture was about to go into the Lumerico power play yeah. on Dorado. <laughs> I tell you, but it was a good Graviton surge there to finalize the fight there from Sile. Regardless, uh, they're going to have the self-destruct to set up the next fight. More importantly, Dylan, uh, the Earth Shatter in this last team fight. I could be possibly you never know how decisively these team fights could go because Dennis is about to have the graviton surge for UNS could go in their favor but the positional awareness coming out from the defending team of inbreds very strong oh my goodness self-destruct sequence as well the earth shatter oh golly G willikers that is a double kill with the DMAC right there that is looking very strong and uh you know what panda you you made the caster prediction right there you made you said it was going to be the last team fight I 30 seconds remaining you could contest this but Whew, this is gonna be close. They could get back onto the point, and, and that's why I was saying how decisively it was. It was very quick, and under the speed boost coming from Lyalor, they could get back to the point in time. Uh, the speed boost is still a very good uh, ability to use, and Reinhardt could charge on the point. Sure, he might have to give his life because of it, but they're coming the back way, the quickest way to get back onto the point. They have the Graviton Surge available, Bemi. They could find an opening in this fight. They could potentially do that. They do have a grab that they're dropping right now. Oh no, my God, that is not good. That is bad news bears right there. Sound bear coming in as well. Looking like Ambra is looking pretty strong. Nice but the are coming in. Oh my gosh, that is huge. It is coming in right now at your face. And it is just showing nothing but no mercy at all. Nothing but relentless murder there in their eyes. They're trying to find this push to the second point. Get this truck moving. We got to get it to the whatever power plan they need to do. And now. <laughs> We're seeing this coming into the second point. They're trying. There's one more fight going. in. Self-destruct sequence. Is it going to be a little too high? Dennis is on the wrecking ball. Double kill for no bird. Oh my gosh. It's going to be huge. They're going to be able to get Silent Equinus and there's still it. And there it is. A clutch. No bird. Self-destruct sequence. And we're still trying to get to that third point right there. Yeah, they're finally going to be able to go start charging their power here at the Lumerical Power Plant, Bami. And then Silent through the Graviton Surge, walking back into the point. They hit the bus way over yonder towards where the, the attackers are spawning now no combo to come out nobody was even caught in it from inbreds or from uns rather now uns they have that momentum back in their favor they have the rally from bunny Ooh, and they're about yeah. to have another earth shatter from den and dylan on the other hand has been lackluster with these shatters so far then on the other hand has been setting up this team wonderfully oh well there's an earth shatter does find fully torn but it's not a big deal it's especially with an earth shatter like this from coming in from den from downtown as well. Mick goes down as well. No bird is going to get the mech, but they managed to just get these trades in the. And you know, normally I wouldn't say these trades would be in value of attack, but right now they are looking so good right now for the attack on the side of UNS. Yeah, and the attackers aren't losing the uh, the biggest members to uh, to get off the payload. They still have all three tanks. They're able to hold forward. Dennis, with all this charge, he's charging his Graviton Surge very quickly, bullying the members, but the healing is gone. Oh, a good boop. Saves Dennis' life, and now they can recontest the six. Sound barriers. Well, they're going to be able to come in strong. Bunny is coming back, and there's could be shield bashing. They're waiting for them. Dylan's almost down. Half life left. They are coming in. Still waiting for Half-Life 3. There's the grab. It's coming in. It's huge. 
It does allow them to zone in. It doesn't get anybody, but it does allow them to have a little bit of safety. There's Shiren response, though. Both traded in, but the Transcendence comes in. Oh, and the Dennis gets booped back off. They have to make it round back, and they're going to see what they can do. But fully targeting your boy Dan is going to go down right away. But there's the sound. Oh, my God. These self-destruct sequence coming in, taking out Silent Hill, and both tanks are down. They still have four members left. They're still continuing. They have no bird going in, but the sound, burns. The sound barrier is able to come into play. Self-destruct sequence able to get Lilo, and then it's going to be able to buddy and go down. This looks like this is going to be finally the wick going down in favor from the side of Inbreds. No bird. They're trying their best to contest it. But they get flung off. The wick will go down. And that was very admirably done. Oh my god, that was still good, Panda. And that's not where you want to overstep your boundaries. Fully Torque stepping a little bit too far to the left of the payload into a very angry German man. And that was Dylan playing the Reinhardt. He's cleaved his way and Fully Torque, as I'm sure you saw, ladies and gentlemen, uh, did get eliminated with his transcendence. So it was going to be the one ultimate that could have kept uh, the attackers of UNS in that favor. But it was almost there. It's 82.34 meters and it was almost captured all three points on the Rado. Well, now they definitely have their win condition set in their eyes for both of these teams. Uh, Inbreds, on the other hand, looking strong once they finally found the man advantage in their favor. But they definitely struggled on the uh, the tank duel uh, in this fight. It was a different battle once the momentum started shifting in the favor of UNS. And once we started seeing the confidence from Den just to push forward and the composed play from the rest of his tanks, Dennis with the particle barrier at a right time to keep him up in that matchup, his Earth Shatters were looking so good, and it was keeping UNS in these fights. And more or less, it's actually what, uh, what caught them and captured Point B in the first place. A big four-man Shatter coming out from Den and almost snowballed their way all the way to the third and final capture point. If they can do that same exact uh, style and, and president around their Reinhardt and duel off uh, Dylan, the enemy main tank of Inbreds, they're going to continue to look pretty clean on Dorado. Yeah, absolutely. The follow-ups are strong here, too. All right, Dive, coming in. Panda, talk to me. Talk to me about this dive. It's not goats. What are we it's, looking at, man? It's not goats, but with the pharmacy, you're definitely lacking heals. It's going to come down to style to hitting these shots. They can definitely... Uh, uh, they can dislocate, I suppose, the Zenyatta, but it all comes down to Yigits. He has to hit these direct rockets to make an impact. A quick barrage could definitely spell an end for the defending team. They're playing very aggressively, playing inside these walls. You know, Fair is going to have a hard time finding these rockets. Certainly has high ground advantage though, thanks to the power of Sile, just keeping things watching. They are not going for the igloo strap, but they're certainly where they are with. They wanted to do that, but now they are just kind of backed up in this corner. They're just trying to get cover from here. Fair, yeah, not going to find much results here, but this is kind of backed up in the corner, and I don't really have believe barrage. this. Barrage is almost ready as well. Yeah, that is pretty nuts. Yeah, it's nicely done, thanks to the charge of the power of Chalky Milk if they are able to get this, but looking like they're able to get Sile, huge stuff from Fully Torque. Sile does get the res though, uh, get res though, but they're still just putting on this pressure right now. I kind of like this fallback, this base of operation. There's the barrage, but the Matrix is just gonna get eaten. There's the Sabair coming into play. A Primal Rage coming in from Dylan, and we're seeing it in all fights so early. And uh, back into the barrage it goes, and there's Dylan going down as well. I really cannot believe that UNS is doing this right now. Another barrage from Yigridus, but they go down and get punished for this. My goodness, Sile's still going to get charged up. Not really contested much, except for a laser by Dennison. I cannot believe what I just saw. These were fantastic. These were the, the support plays that I saw on Busan. Fully Torque and Lylor, fantastic play. The sound barrier for the first barrage. The transcendence for the second barrage. Absolutely shutting down all of the work that the pharmacy was finding for inbreds and now they find themselves on the junk rat just to try to really break through all this armor and all the shielding that bunny and all three tanks of uns have been providing this entire time two minutes has already passed for this attack my gosh certainly uns has woken sile it's a great response with the junk rat but we'll have to see how it's going right then the dylan's about to go down self-destruct sequence coming in only gonna find him but leo lore but there's a huge grab coming in there's a transcendence coming in a good response self-destruct sequence oh my goodness no bird it's gonna be able to get the triple kill how on earth did he do that the transcendence swarmed out so soon but there it is no bird a gained the quad kill with the cherry on top being yiquitous that's the one struggle that you have there, especially when the defenders are playing so well and spawn camping you. You have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The self-destruct was so properly placed. No bird, fantastic play there. No Reinhardt shield to keep everybody alive. The, uh, the bubble had dissipated from Dylan. Uh, nowhere to run and they got caught off and now Den has the Earth Shatter. He is fishing for it. The bubble's already down from Dylan. 
And now they're oh, tired from side. Rip tire's out. looking pretty good. It does That's get bunny. One. And there it is. A lot of damage onto your boy Den, but they're able to find a lot of healing for them in return. And they're able to find Dylan. You shatter as well into Rio. But you could just drop in the barrage, but there's a sound barrier. Able to respond in just the time. Able to dodge out of the way. The Valkyrie's able to keep up with Chalky Milk. And they're doing what they can right now just to fight back. But they're so all over the place right now, Panda. They're just getting zoned and separated from their team. It's so hard. And they got 60 seconds left. And now they're finally gonna swap. I, I can only assume that they're probably gonna definitely giving up this pharmacy. Yep, they're gonna go over to the full Zen Goats. Probably a moment here. This is the last team fight scenario. Bunny came back. He's giving the rally to the rest of his team. And Dennis is about to have the graphs on search. They're walking into a Goats v Goats matchup now. That's only so much more charging he can hold. He's definitely gonna find the upper hand in this matchup. Inbreds, they have no ultimates in this fight. No ultimates in this fight, and unless they're able to charge like the mad people they were with that barrage, but looking like it's not going to be the case, unfortunately. Dennis has this grab coming in. Wait for a nice. time. Use grab. No way to respond to it. self destruct even coming down, and it's going to find no results, actually. It's not actually going to be huge, but it is still allowing the team to go in there char charging blindly as sort of a flare of victory, if you will. Six seconds remaining. Someone might be able to get to the point in time because the spawn gates are just so dark. Yeah, close. it is true. And one second left. He's just barely getting on there. And now you can see the disengage coming through from UNS trying to get the heals properly available, but they still have the transcendence here. Tile is so close to this Graviton Surge that they might be able to find a slight momentum turn in this fight. But UNS are already aggressing back on to the enemy Reinhardt of Dylan. Transcendence coming in. They're doing the best they can. Mick is able to respond to it. We'll see how it goes. Use Graf. Self Destruct Sequence is coming in. Is it going to find any results? No. The shield from Reinhardt. Your boy Den still able to stay alive, but the triple is going down. It is looking pretty strong at the moment. It looks like Inbreds are still going to be able to push this through. A team fight finally won in their favor, but it is OT. It is Holy OT right smokes. now for sure, but this is a t that was a decisive team fight won by Inbreds, and you and us ah! are definitely happy about that because they have three ultimates to contest this payload with. They have the sound barrier to recontest with all the armor that Bunny can provide. In between the shielding and the health of Dennis, he can find a really good Graviton Surge there. This is going to be their win condition, Benny. Oh, it's going to be the win condition. It's so much more. There's the rally coming in from both responses, though. The grab, huge. The huge shatter's not going to fight anything, but the sound barrier from Inbreds is going to be great. They're doing what they can to keep this pay pushing payload overtime happening right now. They're doing what they can. There's a sound barrier response to the UNS, and they're doing what they can. Your boy Den still trying to stay alive. Has no sound barrier up to their name. Doing what they can. Pushing it through. Transcend is coming in from Mick. Looking great. They're trying to see what they can find with these kills. The ultimate battles just going back and forth. Able to hide in the building and a Huge grab as well to follow up. Dylan is able to get double kill, and this is looking great. Inbreds, they're doing the impossible. They're going the distance. They're trying to get this point over, and they managed to do so. They're, oh my gosh, another two minutes and 30 seconds going on. What is happening, Panda? The taxing team fight going in the favor of the attackers, just finding good key picks. More importantly, Bunny overstepping his boundaries. Going down first in the, going down first or second in that team fight as a forget it's not what you want because Den has, doesn't have the Inspire available to keep himself alive in that mid to end team fight and dylan being very good and recognizing when to flicker his shield and when to aggress forward with his cleave opening up the team fight for the rest of his team and now they have a self-destruct and another earth shatter another earth shatter self-destruct everything oh but you're shattered oh my goodness that is going to stop things really down his track ender arrow it's going to be able to get a double kill with the self-destruct sequence looking great here they're just going to be able to find so much stuff and great results, a lot of value. Look at that alt economy going in right now. They are keeping up with UNS right now, Inbreds. What's most important is that Inbreds are winning these team fights so decisively off of one or two ultimates. So now they still have the Transcendence available. They didn't get pressured, so they have that against Dennis's Graviton Surge. Fully Torque is gonna have to hold on to his Transcendence because Sile is just 24% shy of his Graviton Surge. Back and forth once again. Support alts coming in. Dylan almost going down. That was a little bit risky. A huge grab though, falling back and dropping it right away, using the payload as a vantage point for that. A huge earth shatter in response though, but the sound there able to keep as many as they can alive. Dylan does go down, but they still have a five-man roster still going into this, just still pushing on through, and they are making it very very strong contest right now. They made it, and they still got another two minutes and 30 seconds left. And this is why I keep saying the word momentum, because the momentum is heavily yeah. in, the, in the favor of the attacking team. Inbreds are looking very clean. Once they broke out of their spawn, they have not stopped. The payload has broken out of overtime. They have two minutes on the board to push it through these last meters, because don't forget, UNS didn't capture all three points. So now the win conditions in the favor of the attacking team. The self-destruct coming Oh no! That's a good. 
self-destruct. Oh, gotta find fully torque. And that's, you're right, it is a good self-destruct. There is no chance to charge up that sound there. Uh, Transcendence anytime soon, Panda. What do they got to do? What does UNS got to do to just stop this momentum? They literally just need to attack this with as many ultimates as they can prop, uh, I guess, possibly produce at this point. And Dennis going to have the Graviton Surge again. There's no win condition set because Mick, again, charging this Transcendence like a madman. And all the armor that the Vegeta of in, uh, Inbreds has been producing, it's really hard to find an opening for the defending team. Oh, that my, from god. Dylan. oh my god. But the trick, but the grab is going to be huge. And there's a self-destruct sequence. It's going to come down in the nick of time. A little high. Not going to find much results. There's a huge grab coming in from the side of the Inbreds. Not going to find much result. Pins coming in from both sides, taking out a couple of supports, but it's still UNS is in the advantage because they're near spot. Soundberry's going to come in. They took out Dylan, but can they take out Style? They need to be able to just keep on going. They need to stop this momentum. It looks like they're able to go to such a momentum-based comp. They need to be able to stop this, but it looks like they're just switching the back around. The self-destruct sequence is going to be pretty good for the zoning. Keeps them on the left, right side of the payload, and they're just going to use Bunny switching on over to Doomfist. They're really just trying to stop this in any way they can with 45 seconds remaining. Good stall switch coming out for Bunny. He's actually going to go back to spawn. They're going to go back over to that traditional composition. Going to go back over to the Brigetta because then yeah. this is the last team fight. Mick has the transcendence yet again. My word. And even though the attacking team is respawning and this is the last team fight for them, uh, Yigis is about to have another rally. So the armor is about to be fully replaced. And Dylan's going to have an Earth Shatter walking into this next team fight. Den needs to be composed. He needs to not only block this Earth Shatter from Dylan, but he needs to find a three or four himself to win this team fight for the defenders. It's a tall order, but it's not impossible for Den for, to do this. They have been working their butt off for this, and they are doing what they can at the moment. There is a huge amount of person all shatters not gonna happen unfortunately den does get blocked but we're seeing how this goes dylan gets a lot of pressure they're taking out a lot of ultimates but there's the trance the earth shatter coming in but that's gonna be huge there is gonna be the sound barrier coming in with the self-destruct sequence it's right after your time it's gonna find anything no it's a little too high unfortunately they're not gonna be able to find a result there is gonna be the grab coming in but they're all shattering response are you kidding me right now there's a sound barrier happening right now it's ot it's all over again it's deja vu panda i can't believe this at the moment dylan and Guerrero, it's gonna go down down to DMEC. This could be where UNS stops it. Sal goes down. They unfortunately kill themselves in the process of trying to save this point. Yiquid is it's going to be stopped by Torque, but they get traded in by Chog and Milk. The self destruct sequence is happening right now. It goes off. It does find Dennis. They're still pushing this through. It's 3v2 person rosters going in. I can't believe it. The Divas are staying strong. And Guerrero, it's bumper cars all over again. My God, the self destruct sequence not finding anything, but Nobert still staying alive. That's in crucial time. They're able to come back from this. UNS is looking like they're finally going to be able to stop this, and they do manage to do it. Oh my gosh, through a thread in the needle. UNS is going to be able to keep this alive. Through Defender's we have a game. favor. Defender's favor, almost like a very thin rock skipping on a lake. We have ourselves a series. UNS oh. find themselves a victory, and they find themselves winning in that, in that very final moment. A good play again coming through from Nobird there at the very end. The triple kill really setting up the pace and almost spelled the end for Inbreds on that attack. But I, I gotta, I gotta say again. I mean, once Inbreds finally broke out of their spawn, that momentum was a big snowball down there in Dorado, and it was almost, it was, it was not stopped anytime soon. And that last team fight coming down in the favor really makes you think how good Brigetta still is, regardless of those changes, because of all the heals that she provides, yes, is keeping your team fight going for such a long time that you get lost in the time. And you have to respawn and fight in that last team fight scenario in the 6v6, and then you're just down. I have so many questions, but let's shift this into perspective with I hold shift and the analysts. Well played, sir. Well played. I have round of applause to you. Round of applause to you. Let's start things off, boys, because I, we want to go back to the beginning, but I want to start actually in the <laughs> second map with specifically how things started on that first point hold for UNS. You see the far and the widow, and then the junk rat. You gotta love the way that defensively UNS was playing to start things off. And I think for UNS, the, the thing I liked most about how they were playing is their rotations, right? You know, they rotated, you know, they saw that the Pharaoh Widow was coming out, so they rotated into the little house and contested the cart from that little cubby way there. And then once they saw the Junkrat and double projectile spam came out, they moved back onto the streets phase. So Junkrat's not gonna gain the value and the Pharaoh neither. And the kids there got a barrage and 
two barrages in 30 seconds and it did nothing because they were just covering the Farah every single time, covering the Junkrat as well. So I think they did a really good job with their rotational play and holding them in that spawn for as long as they did. But then, you know, you switch over to Goats and Goats is a really good composition still. And that's one of the risks you run when you don't run Goats out of the gate, right? Is, you know, there, there are gimmicks to these different compositions, right? The Widow Farah is perfectly viable, but if, you're up, if the enemy team finds a way to play around it, then what, what do you do? Well, you have to swap, and that swap did not come through nearly quickly enough. I would have liked to see, after that first rotation, an immediate swap to Ghosts. Oh, they want to hold in the room? Okay, we're going to play Ghosts. Because they don't have the May, which you need to hold in that room efficiently, right? And they stayed, they tried to get some value out of some ultimates that didn't really go off at the same time, didn't coordinate very well. And if you if you just switch to Ghost and that snowball starts two minutes sooner, we could be looking at a very different scoreline. And you you got to go back to the whole Pharaoh, just 0 for 3 on those barrages, two yeah. of them in a row. And I we were talking when we were in the background, as soon as you missed those first two, might be time to reconsider. It took them a little bit longer. But you hit on a really good point here, Paul, and that was the simple fact that there were ultimates going all over the place. We saw a lot of whiffed grabs, not just yeah. eaten, but just Oof. placed in spots that were sucking in one, if any, players whatsoever. That was kind of the storyboard for most of what happened on Control and Busan. So, Kenobi, I mean, wh where are things mostly going wrong? Was it just a shaky start, or was it just overambitious? We saw Dylan throwing out a, a lot of really from, like, downtown shatters. <laughs> Kyle had a really downtown grab on Mecca that no one could follow up on. Is it mostly that, or is there something else to consider? Yeah, I think some coordination issues and maybe some shot calling is partly part of the reason of why this is happening. You know, a lot of the times in what I'm seeing from both of these teams is they're basically throwing ults away at fights that, at fights that are basically over, right? We saw in the start right. of Dorado for uh, UNS's attack, they're going in and then they just, they shat, they get grabbed and then two people die and then immediately a trance comes out. Like that's not, you don't want to be giving trance to that fight. Shatter, I can understand because you're trying to counter the damage coming in from the grab, but trance, no, trance you need to be keeping. And with a lot of these ultimates, they're just kind of being thrown out willy nilly. It was weird because Inbred's on the first point on, you know, when we were on Mecha base and they were playing May, they were playing very well against their combos, you know, always using the May Blizzard with the grab on, which is what you want to do. You don't want to really Kobe out those. So I think it was kind of weird to see Dorado after how well Inbreds had played with their ultimates beforehand. It seemed like yeah. everyone kind of just got the Dorado bug and just didn't really, were just throwing <laughs> out ults left and right, didn't really know what they were trying to do with them. And Paul, we were also talking not just on certain ultimates that were missing, but also the simple fact that there were so many defense matrixes not soaking in things like fire strikes. I mean, there were so many that got out for free. When you look at something like GOATS specifically, where it is very ability dependent, that's something that you cannot allow to happen at this level. Yeah, abilities are, like, we talk about GOATS a lot as one of the strongest ultimate-based com er, uh, compositions in the game, but it's also just one of the strongest just dry fight compositions in the game, right? You have so many things that mitigate damage and deal damage at the same time, a lot of the times, right? Like, you, you have to be finding value 100% of the time, and you need to know what value you need to be looking for. So when it comes mm -hmm. to the Diva Defense Matrix, you need to be shutting down the Fire Strikes from the enemy team, especially when they're at long range. Because if you don't, we saw it on um, on UNS's first push, right? Yabo built a Shatter far quicker than his counterpart. 50%. And it's not, yeah, right? <laughs> Twice as quickly as his counterpart. So it's not just the defense matrix either. It comes down to Zarya bubbles, which have been in the wrong spots. It comes down to Brig uh, bashes going into shields a lot of the times. You, those are abilities where you can guarantee value, and you should be, uh, I would say, 80% of the time. Fair enough. I've, that's a good number, I think, to put on it, too, if you're able to get to that level. Now, before we go back in the game, we're going to tie it up 1-1. We started the game off with a lot of shaky ultimates who hit them, who didn't hit them, but it kind of resolved at the end of this second map of who used that last ultimate properly and who maybe used one when they didn't need to. So for you guys both started with Kenobi, 
what are those situations where you, yes, use that last ultimate versus no, don't use that ultimate. What are you looking for as far as who's still on the board when you make those calls? So I think if your Reinhardt and Brigitte are dead, that's probably a fight that you lose. Reinhardt and Brigitte are the two probably most important parts of a GOATS composition. And when those are gone, you lose a lot of, you know, you lose your stun, you lose a lot of your healing as well. You you lose the cleave damage coming out from the Reinhardt. When those are gone, I don't really want to see you trancing unless you can guarantee that, you know, the other team doesn't have a trance and you can maybe grab and clean sure. up that way. But there are it's a lot of variables to say when you should trance. And I would like to see them maybe think about those a little bit more instead of just saying, oh, like a lot of my team is dead. You know, I'll just hit trance and see if we can clean up this fight early like that. You want to at least have some ultimates that you can think you can, you know, combo with it. Again, it just comes down to that idea of guaranteeing value, right? You can throw out these YOLO transcendences, these YOLO grabs, yeet them from long range, right? <laughs> but you just don't guarantee the value. And GOATS is a composition where you can, you can guarantee value, even if it's just baiting support alts or out of the other team. That is value, right? And so there's no reason you should be just you know praying that this works right you should come into every team fight with a plan well plan uh, might sound better than it might actually end up being an application hanamura is what <laughs> we got up next let's send things back to the boys on the calling desk we'll call it i guess bemi and panda take it away boys have fun yes hello shift we're doing just fine here on the call and desk and uh back here panda we got a series on our hand one doesn't want to lose momentum and the other one wants to not go x and two and uh my goodness, Panda, I uh, I got I got nothing to say here, but this is high stakes situation. And the casters, uh, the analysts did make a good observation, which is that maybe the maybe the nerves are getting to them. Maybe the shot calling isn't as strong. What do you think? Uh, honestly, I mean, we, when you're in such a high stakes matchup, uh, it, it's uh, it's honestly. It... Sorry, I had to hang up that call. My bad. My bad. Hello. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we, oh, we, 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 I had to hang up. We were on a, on a different call. Business oh, call you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, Hannah yeah. the, the flowers really get in the in the wow. moment, and I just forget all this Overwatch just happens, and I had to take a business <laughs> call. But I think I think when you when you get down to it, Bemi, I think they're definitely right. In a high stakes matchup, when you're a very great team of, against a very great team, you're gonna see these uh, these minor mistakes happen. Misplays will happen. Big, huge earth shatters are going to happen. The follow up might not always be there comes down to those very decisive moments and i just think in those final bits of dorado we just saw uns come up on top of that. yeah absolutely and we'll see somebody coming on top of that zen it's going to be dealing with that that winston coming in with the dive and this is looking very strong for them able to stop ghost this time i mean it's pretty strong dive when it comes on to defense for the side power more especially when you're going up against goats just because of that open field at the very beginning through that choke it's a very very quick push there from the attacking team uh yeah i gotta say that uns were definitely a little bit advantageous there just to kind of push forward and just wait for dylan to counter dive more or less and just to find the pick uh of holy torque really displacing the supports of uns not what you want in the ghost time they're gonna try to attack him one more time i'm gonna take this old tip your hat to the cloud nine strategy go all the way upstairs cross the bridge take over the, the little health pack down there and try to see where they can attack that. To grandma's house we go, and we'll see if they're able to find that point as well in the process. Uh, pushing right on through that dive. Still not gonna get over well. Mick is getting stopped right there in this dive. This uh, goat's composition is just finding a little bit of a hard time finding the opening. It, it kind of seems like they're just playing ghosts to play ghosts because it's optimally. I don't necessarily see what the target prioritization is going in here. They're not really focusing on Dylan or trying to demech the diva. Uh, there's a there's a couple of questions that are going through my head right now about this right now. Well, it's still goats for goats at the end of the day, but it's monkey goats versus the tried and true Reinhardt. Well, that's goats. true, yes. And the, what the what the monkey goats does in in uh, in part to the Reinhardt is that you're able to separate the Zenyatta, you're able to break away the uh, the aura of the Lucio, and you're able to just really disrupt the entire backline as they're just trying to speed boost. Once the aura comes through and the amp comes through, there's not a whole lot you can speed boost away from. And now the ult economy heavily being of the defender's favors you can see right there graviton surge stuff the struck coming through prominently dylan will have another primal rage bemi and the attackers they're gonna have to play that ult economy game that we saw there on dorado to find this momentum in their favor they're gonna have the graviton surge and their earth shatter from hiden so if they're find the opening to shatter maybe two or three picks it could definitely swing in their favor to capitalize on point a 
Very true, and hopefully we'll see some kind of uh, sort of swing in momentum right now for the side of UNS. I would hate to see them get stopped here, and there's a good grab. That could be the opening that they need. Self-destruct sequence could be big. Not going to find anything. Transcendence helping out real real quick here. Fully torqued, just going down very quickly. And UNS, I mean, honestly, they're holding on to these alts for a really long time. They should. Do you think there should be any switches? 60 seconds remaining. 60 seconds remaining and no uh, if there were any swaps they would have been doing the the fancy dps or the the crazy somber fix there on the first and they would just end up going goats which they're already on or that, that one weird symmetra thing <laughs> yeah that one strange symmetra bastion thing that we see some teams do but it, again the ult economy now in their favor with the rally from bunny if he pops this early enough it's setting up then with this earth shatter could find an opening yet again but they're in the last two fights scenario 30 seconds left for uns to find point a of hanamura yeah, five seconds left. Well, 25 seconds left. We'll see if they're going to be able to find anything. UNS needs to just rush in right there right now. They've been holding on to these alts for a very long time as well, which is kind of a bit concerning. Not knowing when to drop these alts right away as opposed to just throwing them like they were in Dorado. Not throwing them in the state of throwing, but in the way that they were just doing it very quickly. They're doing it right now. They're throwing the air shards. Free huge for sound barrier retaliation. You can just go down. That is something good for the team fight, but Primal Rage comes in. Good zoning as well. The self destruct sequence is going to be used. They do manage to get Enduro before they can get D-Mech, but they do manage to find the boy dead. And that is going to be unfortunate for them. And Dylan does go down. UNS looking very promising, but the Transcendence comes in and allows the contesting to happen. And they might even just as well just try to regroup here and fight this. There is a grab coming in, though. That's pretty huge. And they're dropping everything right now. They're trying to stop this as quick as they can. This Lucio, man, is going as quick as it can to contest, and that is pretty much going to be it. They have, they have foregone the contesting. They have used the, the time make as much as they can, and they've pretty much done very well. Really good ult tracking coming out from, or just, I guess, ult play coming out from the attack TV UNS. Dennis being mm -hmm. composed. They got the transcendence out from Mick and then grabbed it right up. They found the final moments and they were able to ignore Chalky Milk just trying to stall as much as possible. And now they have the snowball opportunity without any ultimates. So it's just going to come down to vanilla overwatch, which is why they're going that bottom route. They're just trying to find the enemy team off guard and once again find that key pick onto Dylan first. Doing what they can right now. There's the rallies coming in from both sides and uh... Right now, there is a Sile up on top of high ground, dropping the grab, beautiful stuff, just rushing right on in there. And there's the Transcendence coming out right now. This is pretty much taking out all the ultimate economies and making it a little bit awkward here. Primal Rage coming out from Dylan. Earthshadow not finding any results from Den. Unfortunately, UNS, they are trying to get their first tick, but there's just stuff getting in their way from doing that from the side of Inbreds as they're just doing they're, they're voodoo right now. Do we to get a pin? Enduro does go down, and there's a Samir coming in. It gets Sile and also gets Mimic. That's pretty fine there. It does get Bunny. These trades are going back and forth, but it is in favor for defense still. There's a grab going in, I guess, just to play it. I don't fully understand what just happened there, but hey, whatever whatever floats your boat, I suppose they're doing what they can at the moment. Going back and forth, just trying to find if they can take out tanks. Who can take out the tanks the fastest? Dylan switch on over to the Wrecking Ball. It seems like it's working out pretty much in their favor. I don't know how they did that, but they managed to at least get a tick. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, a, I guess regroup coming out from the attack team UNS. I'm gonna wish that they had that graviton surge back in their pocket, but not this time around. Sile's so gonna have the graviton surge setting them themselves up for that last defense. Once they got a time, could get them this uh, point B overall. But it's not what you want to see. You want to see them continuously sticking together. Dylan with that from rage at the beginning of that team fight. Did a good job of displacing a few members and stopped the uh, the Earth Shatter from Hiden, but they were still regrouped, so they were still able to find value, which is why you saw the 50% uh, accrued for UNS here as they look to go under once again, this time with Bunny's Rally. Rally once in, going in, we're seeing what they can do. Grab is going to be used. Self destruct sequence, oh my goodness, they broke the shield, the Bunny goes down. That was a boop as well. Oh my gosh, there was. That was just like a Rube Goldberg machine of Overwatch that just was just triggers after triggers after triggers and it's just so interesting just activating all these effects and oh my gosh Panda, this is looking pretty strong right now for inbreds. One of the most important parts is why you see teams do the Graviton Surge and the Self-Destruct is because Self-Destruct when you're in the closest radius, don't forget, is a thousand damage. So it breaks through armor, it breaks the shield instantly, and it gets you in the upper hand of the team fight instantaneously. Even if you find one or two picks, you're going to win that decisively because you can't take point B of Hanamura or any assault map for that matter without the band advantage or all six members of the attacking team. So now UNS attacking on the high ground this time. He then's going to have the Earth Shatter. Chalky Milk with the opening frag on Lionel. 
Well, I mean, there is going to be the Earthshire coming in from the side. Your boy Den, that's going to look fine for them. But the Transcendence coming in from back and forth, it's almost like fighting yourself. They're just responding with the same ult still. And the only difference, they could drop the Primal Rage right now if they wanted to stop the 60 second charge. Or they might be holding on to it for the last push. Sound Barrier coming in from both sides, trying to do what they can. But I feel like at this point, they should fall back and regroup. They're just making it a little bit more difficult on themselves. Yeah, and that comes down to yet again, they found they found themselves down in the opening team fight, and they were still investing ultimates in a lost team fight. You need you needed Lyalora to stay alive because he had the sound barrier. It came in that final moment, and since that last tick that was taken from UNS, they really haven't found much light because they haven't had the man advantage. Dylan still on this Winston, displacing and disrupting the entire team of the GOATS composition that UNSs are providing that they can't really find an upper hand in these team fights. They're gonna try to go under once again. This time around, Dylan has the final race, so they're gonna really be down on this next team fight. If they can even touch, they barely get on. They do barely get on. They're trying their best, and they're kind of a little all over the place, but fully torque able to find Dylan. That's gonna be good if they can still work up on that. If they can build up a set of operations at this point, they could probably get the second tick at the very least. The third will be a little bit hard. They drop the grab. Layler will go down. Mick able to find the D.Va. Ooh, this is pretty huge. It also transcends is huge, allowing the team to just sort of set up wherever they like. And this is looking great. The transcends will come in, grab, but no response at all. And the wick will go down, and they will only be able to get one tick here on the side of UNS. But hey, that was very admirable from being in the situation of going into OT at the first point. Yeah, they're still able to set themselves up with a win condition, at least on that. I mean, we said that for Dorado, too. They didn't cap all three points on Dorado. They still won that. So, I mean, hey. Hey. UNS, you, still, you still got a Sometimes they work better under pressure, you know? They got the they got the candlelight there on point B of Hannah Moore. I, I believe they have the win condition set. They have proved it to us before in the previous <laughs> yep. map. So, I want to see it once again. Uh, this time around, though, inbreds, they're really firing off on all cylinders. More importantly, Dylan on that Winston. Point B was different than point A because he was really like 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 king of the jungle there. Uh, he he was. I mean, he was able just to contest the high ground, be around everywhere, had the jump cooldown. So he was just falling on the enemy team of UNS as they were just walking into the low ground of all places. That if Dylan felt the pressure, he could just jump out. Sure, it was a good shield bash, and they and they fragged him when he uh, had the final rage in that final moment. But it didn't matter. They never fully dealt with all the other members of uh, of inbreds. And they had a plethora of ultimates to play around with through the entirety of that fight because UNS took such a long time to recruit as little percentage as they did throughout the attack that they uh, they just did for us. And they never really gained an upper hand on the alt economy. Fully torqued uh, with that transcendence at the at the end of it, by the way, also got moved off and he never found his way back up to keep his team alive. Could have been a little bit of a different of the end, but we never mm. fall, saw a full 6v6 on point B uh, from UNS. Uh, but here on point B, when they're setting themselves up, it's kind of going all the way back to Busan. Mecha base. Dennis. Going to be on the May. Looking for the key wall. And see if they're going to be able to speed boost on it here. Or not necessarily speed boost because Lylor is on the Ana with the Zenyatta. Big burst damage. Uh, can really shut down Goats. The Biotic Grenade anti-ing one member. And disrupting them. And, and, and displacing them. Could be the matchup. Now, on the other hand though. Inbred sees the matchup that they have. Go back to spawn. Swap immediately over to the Monkey Goats. Ooh, yeah. And well, let's see if the zoning works out. I mean, this was great that they grabbed information. Didn't even need a Sombra for it. Ice Wall still going to come in because only the Winston can jump over a large tower of ice as they are just going to go rush in through, trying to meet up with their Winston. Dylan's still staying alive, though. That's very impressive. Stun coming in, but they do manage to get Bunny, and this is looking great for the side of Inbreds as they're pushing on through. A little bit back and forth going on right now, but oh my gosh, Dennis able to get Ghost down, and Dorio looking strong here, and this is looking like a first point. It's going to go right away over to them, and uh, this is uh, this was this was good high IQ plays coming in from Inbreds. Yeah, Inbred's fantastic play. They sped boost from Chalky Milk all the way in, gaining any effects of the wall whatsoever. Good choice in the Monkey Goat's composition. Set up Nick on that high ground, just raining in orbs of destruction Ooh. and a proper Discord orbs for his team to pounce on. At that point, it's kind of going back to old true dive. I mean, you get a Winston player just to chase the purple bubble of the Discord orb, and you get this wonderful play. Going up on the high ground, setting up a snowball, perhaps four point feet. Oh my gosh, well, the Earth Shatter comes in, but the Transcendence as well. Potentially, this could be the point B. Oh no, it's the grab! You're right, Didion! Always waiting for that grab to show up, and it shit turns out a dang diva just came into play and got the grab. Silly diva. Grabs are for games. Anyway, self-destruct team coming in, and Dennis takes them out, saying no. 
Darius are not from Gates. They send him right back to spawn. Sal looking great, taking out Snow, uh, Snowbird. I actually think they could take this point right away. They're doing the best they can right now. Your boy Den is still just holding out from the back, seeing what they can with their Winston. But unfortunately, with the Discord order on them as well, it's just not going to be easy. That's the first tick. The second tick. Oh my goodness. There's Dennis with the Doomfist. For three seconds. Still trying to contest the best they can. Does allow Nobird to get on the point for how much longer? This is just going to be trickling in one by one. There's a grab. They're doing what they can to go in. Bunny hops in as well. These are the fastest characters alive you can find in this game that they're just trying to throw in there. And they're doing what they can, but it is not going to be working out. It is the inevitable. Inbreds will take the third map. Yep, and Inbreds are going to be able to go up in the series, take the advantage as we head into our next map of Hybrid, I do believe. So, as we uh, see this play of the game from Dylan, really enabling himself on the Monkey Goats and why it's so powerful. Look at even the Primal Rage, not the most damaging ultimate in the world, but just what the Winston does in general. Displacing, disrupting is what Winston does so, so well in this day and age, in this current meta of Overwatch. A little different than your normal flavor with the Reinhardt, sure, but Dylan really showcasing his main tank skills here today. Uh, Hanamara, however, on that point B, the snowball was set up so wonderfully. Uh, they, the composed play coming out from Inbreds as uh, they got pushed to the brink on Dorado. You almost got to think that when they took that halftime themselves, that they also kind of thought to themselves, what can we do differently in this matchup? And it was just that, just disrupting and really dislocating the supports of uh, UNS. More importantly, not letting Foley Torque find uh, good key Discord orbs and really finding Bunny out of position is how they were able to come up on those team fights so decidingly. And as we go into our hybrid map, Bemi, we are going to a carnival ride because we're going to Blizzard. I love Blizzard World. And uh, just one thing I wanted to mention before we jump into this is that um, I, I did notice that there was a little lack of regroup there was sort of like in the sense that goats you know i personally believe that they were smart in thinking this that it is a momentum based composition you want to try to get as much momentum as you can but in the end if you're just pretty much feeding ultimates and just having 2v5 fights it's not going to be valuable at any rate but the past is the past and we're here in the future now panda and uh we're starting at blizzard world and looking like it is going to be the winston goat once again covers a lot of ground yeah, it does cover a lot of ground indeed. More importantly, it gets you to the high ground very quickly. If Dylan and Andrio can continuously contest this high ground and take it away from the goats uh, that is more accessible here on Blizzard World, uh, being more accessible that they have more access points to get onto the high ground rather than using movement capabilities to get up there quickly with the speed boost of Lyle or they can get up there just as fast. Dylan can really shut that down by a good, uh, what I call Goomba Zomp's uh, Winston Shift in his, in his leap. I that like can, that. <laughs> can really knock uh, a few members, more importantly, the slower members of Foley Torque away from the team of UNS, and that and they can continue to gain the upper hand. I like the Winston Goats that uh, that Inbreds has been playing since the half. It really worked out for them on Hanamura, and they're going to try to find the good success uh, in this matchup. Oh, I almost was about to say, I was like, Yidon, if you come out here on this on this hamster, that, that is going to be a very interesting choice, but they're going to come out with a tried and true uh, Zenyatta Goat's composition, no bird, will swap off the Hanzo, just using the Sonic Arrow, looking for any sort of cheeky holds. There's no cheeky holds, there's only a very angry scientific monkey named Dylan waiting to pounce on your back line. That is very true, and science is the essence of imagination, and we'll see how imaginative they can get with these kills, and looking at... It's looking pretty good right now. Mick on the high ground, able to get the Discord orbs, and looks like good shot calling right there. And they are just gonna pretty much stop this full head, getting the uh, getting the main tank out of the way, and they are just falling back to spawn right now. Yeah, it's almost like when Dylan gets into the back line, just UNS don't really know what to do with it. They land the shield bash, but they don't get the burst damage because the support is there. The harmony orb is already available. Armor pack to come out from the get the player of inbreds. They're really doing a good job of supporting Dylan on his antics in the back line. He doesn't even need a leap back there. He's literally just dropping on him, starting on the high ground and leaping out when he's feeling pressure. Look, he already found Lyalor. Oh my goodness gracious. They managed to find two of the three supports and buddies about to go down. They're all by themselves and they're just falling back. I honestly like the idea of maybe just sort of sticking together as a bunch because if the if dylan just jumps in when they're like all grouped up together they can just easily gang up on them and there's no punishment if they group up together apart from and grab and let's be honest here too what this composition does you can see them continuously push off the high ground but there's always one member that's always still up there and that's mick it's kind of like hanamura yeah. when they attack he's just hanging out on the high ground finding good discord orbs uncontested orbs of destruction coming from the high ground into the enemy tanks of uns they finally use the speed with just to try to shield off as much of that pressure and they're gonna be able to get onto the point dylan still creating the pressure has the problem right 
Oh, but Den goes down. The Primal Rage, like you said, is coming in right now. And they're just going to be able to wipe this up. They may, may not have even needed it, but it will certainly put the final nail on the coffin as they will just go ahead and take this hold again. Oh, my goodness. Just, ah, oh, there's not even enough ult charge to even consider this good. The two minutes has passed in the, in the game so far, and so far the defenders have barely even scraped into their resources. The attacking team have barely able to gain resources, but that's the play that they need. They need to continue to build as much ult charge as possible closer to this Graviton Surge as Dennis as they try to get into this closer room. That's not where you want to be. They have some truck throwing in there. Oh my god. Good shield. Woo. Oh, yeah, that was close as heck as they are just going to try to go in, maybe get a ride on that eagle, see what they can do. The Earth Shatter comes in right now. Not going to gonna find quite a bit, actually, as your boy Den is going to try to rush on in. And this looks like the opening that they needed. They just stayed strong pushing through those ults, and they will finally get this point within the time, Baked Panda. Thank goodness. Great showing right there from UNS. It was a fantastic shield from Eden. The self-destruct didn't find any value with the bigger bang combo. And Dylan with the Winston indoors like that, he had nowhere to escape. He just found a bunch of cleave damage from the Discord orb of Fully Torque that's just living on the Winston. Didn't even use his Primal Rage to stay alive. That team fight is heavily in the favor. And yes, the payload is unlocked for the attacking team of UNS. But now the defenders already pushing through the archway. They have respawn together. They're going to take the fight early. Fight early, maybe even the main tank early as well. But your boy Dan is still gonna stay alive thanks to those fellow supports of theirs, and they're gonna stay together as a group. They, I like this now. They are understanding that they they do fall back, but they don't fall back all together in retreat. And they fall back to give a little space. It's a little bit of a fencing kind of game that they have to go back and forth with each other. And it looks like UNS is starting to understand that really well. Looking at that alt economy as well, it's looking very good for UNS right now, Panda. Yeah, and now that UNS are finally dealing with the Winston, Dylan is giving up the science and going over to Reinhardt. So he's going to be going tit for tat, Zen, Reinhardt, Goats v. Goats on the streets of Blizzard World. They have a few ultimates to play around both teams. In fact, a, five, a six pack of ultimates coming out from the attacking team, setting themselves up wonderfully. The defenders, however, have a uh, three pair of support ultimates to play around with. Uh, Sile just got his Graviton Surge up. Who drops the grab first is my big question, or who will be able to eat it as the D.Va? That's something that we're going to have to see if they get grouped up. They're kind of staying so a little bit spread apart from each other to see what happens. Use grab, though. Self-destruct sequence coming into play. Not going to find much. There's a grab coming in response, and Earth Shatter as well. No contest. Oh, that old oh, self-destruct just coming in the nick of time. They're able to get back, and back up and shield as Dylan. Unfortunately, they will go down, and UNS nicely done just it's responding with the grab into the sound barrier even though they didn't get anything from self-destruct sequence they were able to control the fight a little bit more about five old that was 10 ultimates used uh, in, <laughs> it was a lot that was 10 10 ultimates used in that last team fight across five on each side uh and that and that was that was a lot of particle effects to uh, digest there but at the end of the day the momentum still being the favorite with those that can use the payload to heal don't forget that the payload still gives you that minor bit of an upper hand when you're trying to get that final blow on the one individual and when the burst heal is coming through of all three supports of uns they're firing off on all cylinders here today that are on blizzard world bemi dylan did do enough though he got enough of earth shatter to walk Ooh. forward with and he finds three four oh my gosh they do manage to find some great value with that earth shatter can they follow up and get dead yes they will dylan do is that so personally make sure that they will get followed up with but i mean the alt economy percentage is a lot less scarier than it was earlier in the beginning of this game panda yeah that's right but uh, if you take a look at the uh the side the attackers are about to have a plethora of ultimates walking out of spawn mick needs to hold onto this transcendence and be ready for dennis to try to grab as many of the defenders as uh as possible as you can see now uns they're aggressing as quick as possible bubble already thrown down from dennis they're looking for these tank ultimates they are looking for it indeed, and there it gets Earth Shatter, it's huge! They're gonna go in, but they, can they follow up with it? They do manage to get missed, that's pretty good right there. The turn is not gonna come into use, and they will kind of be able to pressure them in the spot. They gotta remember to push the payload. Uh, they go back to it, the D.Va contesting it real quick. So that does allow the teams to sort of regroup, and now they have to re-engage a team fight all over again, but... I mean, it's good target prioritization going on right now for UNS. Yeah, and that stall just gives up with the rest of the space that they didn't capitalize while moving the payload in the middle of that team fight. The rally coming through from Bunny, and they have the Graviton Surge still left from Dennis. Mick didn't use the Transcendence in that last fight. And Sile with their early Graviton Surge gonna find Dennis out in the open. Ooh, these are self destruct sequence coming in now, but the Earth Shower will come in. This might be huge, actually. No, the shield coming in just in the right positioning. Sound Barrier will come in right after that. Looking pretty strong. A little armor 
dash of armor just to top it all off with the sound barrier come back in return and my goodness this is just such a tennis game of ultimates going on right now i'm really impressed from both sides but right now it looks like inbred's just having a good understanding of what to do and they're just going back and forth it's defensive game all over again tennis back and forth games just whatever you want to call it but right now panda what did he need to do to just close this out to get the third point for uns UNS did a great job of disengaging there. They recognized that uh, the defending team of Inbreds used three support ultimates, so this win condition could be theirs, but they didn't. Old Trash Sile to have that grab oh! on Surge. But the Earthshare coming in right now, it does manage to stop Dylan before they can charge anything and get a, a, an easy pin. Fully Torque almost getting down. There's the Earthshare. It's huge. Can they follow up, though? Oh, my gosh. The way it's positioned is so big, and they will be able to stop this. 30 seconds remaining. The alt economy right now, they do have a grab coming in also with the Lucio sound barrier potentially at 15%. Yeah. You only got to worry about a little bit right now, Panda. And Mix about to have the transcendence on the other side. So the Graviton Surge as Dennis has accrued in the last team fight is almost about to be negated. There are 15 seconds left on the board for Unes to find their attack on at this point. Bunny needs to pop this rally early so that way they can get the speed boost and all the armor available. They're looking for this backside. The defenders are wise enough. Dylan's already cutting them off. The payload's way too far. They need to speed onto the point. Oh, thank goodness they dash onto the point. But there's a the self-destruct sequence coming in. A grab dropped in the back. The transcendence is going to be coming in. They're holding on to that sound barrier. Hopefully, Lilar is able to get it 2% away, and they managed to get it right now. They seem to drop it. No patience at all. Dropping the third share. Use, they're able to find Dylan and Sile as well. They push on through, but they still have a bit of a ways to go right now, Panda. Yeah, that was kind of like UNS just being like, all right, Dylan, you like playing Winston? Well, we're all Winston now, and just just all push into the back line of Inbreds. Find the upper hand. Oh my gosh, they did it. Time respawns too long for the members of inbreds to respawn so uns finding the upper hand in that moment the stuff struck didn't find what they were looking for inbreds found themselves completely disrupted as they had some members looking at the payload and some members looking at that flank with the entire team of uns running big brain macro play coming out from uns to cap all three points of this hybrid map so now what they need to do is continue to win these scrimmages and really kind of, I, I guess, stall out as much through first, second, and third before the payload caps and take advantage of the defender's favor. If they're able to play that game, much like in Dorado Bemi, they can find themselves pushing this in a further series. They may well and could potentially do that. I would honestly love to see a game five of these these groups. They've been absolutely nuts. I love it. But all right, enough about me just hyping over these teams. Let's talk about the compositions right now. Panda, tell me all about it. Well, he then is actually going to come out here on the hamster. So this is kind of, uh, this is a very interesting all together. This is a very oppressive style that we were seeing out. A little bit more oppressive than the Winston Goats, if you will, because of what the hamster brings. It's not... It's not necessarily uh, a biggest main tank because he doesn't bring a big particle barrier to the party like Reinhardt, but he brings enough shielding for himself. And as we back. were about to describe as why it was so bad, he then was just like, you know what? You're right, Panda. It's bad. I'm going to go play Reinhardt instead. <laughs> And so now we're going to have the mirror matchup, Zen Goats versus Zen Goats. You don't want to play Winston here, Dylan. He understands that because you got to go tit for tat. Reinhardt be Reinhardt. You got to get control of the payload and go back to that tried and true momentum shifter and keep it in your favor. Keep it in your favor, indeed. Not going to go for that cheeky Winston play. They're just going to go right in there, fall back to point, and see what they can make of the team fight there on the ground. See if they can find the main tank. Just some good old fashioned stun the Reinhardt and see if he can knock him out. Dylan almost going down with the support. Nicely done, prioritizing them. Fire strike onto Bunny. That's pretty huge. That is very helpful, especially with the fact that there's no shield stun. They could pretty much, they might be even giving up this point now. They're falling back. They're disengaging from the team fight, seeing what they can do, because they really just want to wait for their you know, Brigitte to group up. They want to, don't want to try to take this team fight. And yeah, are they going to see Night? Oh, ho, ho. that is just a thread of a tick left. That is just going to go happen. And they take out your boy Den. And uh, that was a very interesting disengage. And now they kind of just given so much time on the time bank now to Inbreds. It was a really good disengage and a very questionable re-engage coming out from the defending team. UNS, uh, more importantly, Bunny, their Brigetta player, was just moments behind. They could have just given up the payload and contested Archway as six without giving up all that ultimate charge for the attacking team. And look how aggressive the attackers are able to hold now because of all the space that they just gave UNS. The minor misplay there. They're going to have to be careful of the four stack of ultimates. More importantly, Sile with the Graviton Surge and Dylan with the Earth Shadow. We've seen it through the series. They've been consistent. 
absolutely consistent. These these ults have been amazing. There's the Earth Shatter right there. That's pretty good, but the Transcend is able to respond into it. Looking very strong. Your boy Den does go down after that. Er, well, actually, your, your boy Den goes down because of the Earth Shatter. Dylan able to get double kill on to them. And they are going to be able to just push this payload along in breads and not really have too much to worry about, especially ult economy wise. Looking very strong for them right now, Panda. Transcendence came out from Foley Torque, just a minor bits of hesitation there. They could have got more ultimates perhaps out from the attacking team of Inbreds, but Inbreds showing us that well-oiled composed machine that they have been playing, and this is their game more or less to lose. This is their push here. They have five more ultimates to shove into the defenders as they look to capitalize on point B. Grab it to Monster, it's time from Sile. Happening right now, self-destruct sequence landing on top of the high ground, unfortunately not going to be able to get it. And they are just absolutely not having a good day with that, unfortunately. Enduro, oh my goodness gracious, we'll see how this works out. Urshar is still used, they're still pushing on through. Even without the self-destruct sequence, they're still able to find quite a couple of kills and they are able to win that team fight, even though uh, that was, uh, I mean, that was a little bit mistrajectured. Just a bit outside. Just, just, uh, just, just the tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Diva was uh, too busy trying to get as many, um, many takeaways from uh, the nice little shops here in uh, the terrace. I was and, just... and get, yeah, got caught up in shopping and, and just missed self destruct. It's like, wait, hold on, I wasn't ready for it. I didn't study for this quiz. But they still won the point, nevertheless. And no, they no. have about five minutes to push this point. I mean, this is absolutely huge, and the defenders are finding themselves. I, I guess more or less bullied at this point as they look to turn the tides of the favor taking the aggressive push they're not ready Sile has another <laughs> grab available Sile does have another grab available but they are ready to take down Dylan right away and they are holding this at spot which is so interesting to me as this is just not really favorable you're kind of letting the old economy grow on the side of attack and it's a little more beneficial just whoever's near spawn is able to regroup and now they're disengaging falling back there's a grab it's pretty big but there's not going to be a lot of follow-up it's going to be nullified so the shark sequence coming in but you could just able to drop that shield very quickly everybody stay alive and oh this could be big oh my god it will be they will get the triple kill with the t-mech and everybody's going to go down how did this happen? Oh my gosh, did they actually manage to break the shield or was the shield drop early? Oh, it's the charge, okay. Yeah, it's just, uh, well, Inbred's ultimately just singing the song, anything you can do, I can do better. They found a bigger part of that <laughs> Graviton Surge combo. Yes. But the self-destruct coming through from Endero this time around, making up for that street space. And now they're in a final bit in the final turn to find themselves in a last team fight scenario. Bigger Earth Shatter, Dylan, my God, please, man. Please calm down. Panda can't take any more of it. Sound barrier coming in. Return for UN. That's going to be pretty good for them. The sound barrier in retaliation, though, from Inbreds. UN is still trying to find something to just get get this payload just finally to its destination and take this to round three with the amount of time that they have left. This is looking very unfortunate for them. I think. Oh my gosh. They just huge Earth Shatter. So let me see if I get this straight. Uh, if, they, if they tie this. Do they have to go into map five or do they win based on the best of four? This is, I'm pretty sure that that just solidified, um, regardless of this being a draw, that it's going to be Inbreds winning the series here, Bemi. Uh, I don't think that we push into a map five. We'll have somebody else look up on, the, on that. Uh, someone that is a bigger brain than me. Um, so with that being said, we still have a one tick difference to be a draw and to be in the favor of the map differential of UNS and that could still be good regardless of winning the series or not to play upset in the map differential score of uh, of the inbreds who at this point look to be uh, who look to continue their undefeated streak and I gotta say I can see why they're putting a lot of resources and a lot of confidence in Dylan's main tank whether it's his Winston but more stand out his Reinhardt he is just finding so much value in that and more importantly just catching key members of uh, the team of UNS off guard, Lyalor, Foley Torque, and Bunny, the squishy members of this team out of position where they shouldn't be poking around and getting cleaved by a giant hammer. Dylan doing a good job of recognizing when he can aggress forward and when he needs to disengage.
Wow. Yeah, no kidding. That was so amazing. These earth shatters, just huge stuff, and just the amount of mind games going on as well. The grabs are also been pretty big as well. Not a lot of follow ups in the great transcendence. It's just so good all around. And we're now going to see just the goat beat goats. We just see, need to see them take this first tick on the side of inbreds, and they will be able to be done and dusted with this game. And we'll see how this goes for them going back and forth at the moment. Trying to find that last final push and take, just trying to get this Reinhardt main tank going down, but looks like they are having a little bit of of a fight back from the side of UNS, and they're just pushing on through. But I'm sure at some point they will be able to get through it. I mean, the break is trying to find the opening. Earthshire Dylan! Oh goodness gracious! There's the pin, and that has got to be amazing and dylan oh my gosh dylan dropped the earth shower but they managed to turn this around the side of uns and now uns it's two minutes remaining how on earth are they going to survive this, this yes, that was pretty was. amazing it was a five man earth shatter from dylan but the one member that didn't get earth shattered was the main tank and that was your boy he and he was able to pin dylan and finalize that blow after the sound barrier came through from lylor it was really composed play keeping the reinhardt alive keeping his defenders favor they have the graviton surge now from dennis but mick with the transcendence could turn on the defenders team but it is in their favor benny it is in their favor indeed I absolutely cannot believe this, and this is uh, going to be pretty huge as well. Waiting to see uh, what they can find. I don't know. They just had that in their hands, but they do have a lot also go in. They're driving the rally. Going to push on through. They're disengaging a little bit, but the Earth Shatter is going to find Dylan, but there is a self-destruct sequence coming in. Is it going to find anything? It is going to find Den. That's going to be huge, but there's the transcendence coming in from both sides. Dennis does have the high ground though, and they're trying to find what they can do. Bubble's not going to do much, it's not going to last for much longer. Self-destruct sequence coming in, desperate attempt, is it going to find anything? It's going to get the D-Mac on to Enderio, but is it going to be huge enough? Fully Torque does get booed by Chalky Milk, and that's going to be unfortunate for them. There's just no bird remaining, and they're going to try to contest this, but I don't see much happening after this. Den just goes in, charging right in there, into the group, and into their own demise, and that's going to be it. That is... Without a doubt, Inbred's taking this map for, and that will be taking the series. Yeah, and Inbred's doing a fantastic job there. You saw it at a multitude of times, whether it was the beginning of that fight or not. Uh, they were able to disengage and reevaluate their situation, come up on that uh, that cooldown economy, and take their fights when they knew they needed to take it. Big play of the game coming through there again. You gotta tip your hats over to your fellow Reinhardt of Inbred, Dylan, setting up those plays with the pin onto the other Reinhardt of Hiden, controlling the matchup, really showcasing why uh, Goats v Goats is almost like 3-day chess. Absolutely, and a little bit of a shout out to also on the other side of UNS uh, to uh, Dennis the to No Bird actually with self destruct sequence it's pretty huge and also eating those grabs a lot of the time. I think that that came out more from them than anybody else, and that was pretty huge. But I mean, either way, uh, that is it from the call desk. As uh, we are going to go ahead and hand this over uh, and take a quick pause over with our friend Kenobi and type shift to start the sentence. Type shift, huh? I don't, I don't know where I was going with calling dude. desk, but I'm going to question your call a little bit more on that one. Uh, gentlemen, we have to start with the most important thing that we just saw. How about all of these hot diva bombs into these <laughs> extra spicy grabs that we saw? Kenobi, I know that you loved every second of it. I, I was just, I was on cloud nine watching every single, you know, Graviton self-destruct during that. It, it, we call it the bigger bang combo and there wasn't really the bang to any of them, right? Because sure. on Han going back to Hanamura, you know, we saw UNS um, throw out some pretty questionable grabs, I would say, and then some questionable diva bombs to follow up. And it's not that every time, you know, the combo is good. And like a lot of the times you want to have the self-destruct uh, diva bomb combo, but you need to think a little bit. You can't just see the Graviton and then say, oh, there's a Graviton. I just throw my Diva Mech out. Because sometimes with how they were playing, throwing those Gravitons out, there was no one in there. So you're just wasting two ultimates for basically nothing. So you, you have to really kind of just think a little bit more and think a little bit quicker. You know, say, if you're going to be doing this, you need to make sure that you're going to be getting value. And that was kind of what Possible was talking about at halftime is you have to be making sure that you're getting value out of these ultimates. And for UNS, when it came down to it, they just weren't getting as much value as the other side were. And for you, Paul, I mean, 
it's not just the fact that they're missed ultimates. It's what occurs afterwards. You know, you miss something like a grab and you throw a diva bomb into it. All of a sudden, your win condition on the opposite perspective is just, well, all we need to do is hit one ultimate. And we already have a one for two trade there. And the effectiveness just kind of snowballs from there. And that was one of the biggest things we saw, not only on Hanamura, but also as we saw those early opening point fights for the side of inbreds. Yeah, it comes down to uh, a bit of discipline, and inbreds have a lot better discipline. They recognize a lot of the time, hey, these ults they're throwing out, we have the ability to deny them value if they even needed to deny it in the first place. Um, and they just back up, they wait a second, they come back with their own ults. Um, Dylan hitting some nice off-angle shatters and yeah. even one martyr shatter on their uh, point C defense of Blizzard World. Gotta love that. It Dies for the point. team. It did. It absolutely <laughs> did. Most of the time, you know, if you're a Reinhardt dying, you don't want to shatter there, but he made it work. So, you know, props off, or props to him. And honestly, hats off to uh, the diva of uh, Skyle on Inbreds as well. I felt he was much, much uh, stronger when it came to positioning and bubble placement. And those are two mm -hmm. things Zarya has to be good at, right? We saw Dennis getting caught out or using bubbles on the wrong target sometimes. And now that the uh, Brig Bash no longer goes through shields, the Zarya bubble is really what the most, I would argue the most important cooldown ability in the GOAT's composition. Uh, you know, it's not an ultimate, but it's just so good at denying value out of the enemy team. And Skyle was far better with them. Well, not just that. We saw in Hanamura a couple of different times. He was just sitting on the high ground platform, just yeah. free raining down plasma bombs right on top of people. I mean, and free gravitons on that. You can't miss them when they're right down in front of you like that. Uh, Takeaway points, wrong. though. As we wrap this up, two losses now for UNS, still undefeated for inbreds. As we push towards playoffs, obviously one team sitting a little prettier than the other. I want to get your take on both teams, though, from both of you, Kenobi. Uh, things do improve on both sides of the ball here for these teams. I think for UNS, what you need to really improve on is just your the ability to make shot calls at correct moments and faster than they were. Because, you know, we saw on Hanamura and on Hollywood specifically, they took a very long time to adjust to what the composition was running. You know, they were running, they would rotate through low ground when there was a Winston on the other side, where it's like, no, just take the, take the high yeah. ground. You're a Reinhardt composition. Don't let them just free farm you from the high ground like that. You mentioned at least Kyle just sitting up there throwing plasma bombs, farming, uh, farming grab. Mickey as well, just sitting there on Zenyab on the high ground saying like, okay, I'm just going to throw all my orbs and discords. It's going to be totally fine um and on hollywood again like they were rotating through the low ground when they could have just gone high ground and when they went high ground surprise surprise with that composition yeah. that you have you took them off high ground and you took the point so that's something i want to see from you uh from uns uh and for inbreds inbreds it, it looks really good a lot of the times i think alts are still something that they need to work on alt combos we saw it you know on mecha base and on busan where they played a lot better you know they were using their grab and their may alt very very well but there were some times where they you know they were throwing out bad grabs and they were throwing out you know bad self-destruct so i want to see that cleaned up a little bit but inbreds is a team i think could probably go pretty far and maybe make it to that playoff spot yeah i couldn't agree more um, inbreds looking very good. They know what they're doing. Like I said, was talking about at halftime, they seem to come into every team fight with the game plan. Sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. I would just like to see them clean that up from uh, the game plan being executed 80% of the time to that you know upper 90s percent of the time that you would you would want to see from a team that ideally probably wants to push into those contenders trials, right? So you're gonna need to just make sure. As, as much as you can, as much as any team feasibly can, you are guaranteeing the value out of those ultimates because it's goats. You can do that. And at the moment, it doesn't look like that's going anywhere anytime soon. I mean, we said it before. I mean, yeah, it's not yeah, going. It's still pretty strong. It's still pretty, strong. it's still pretty good. Still pretty good. Just play goats forehead. But that's going to do it for us on the desk as well as for the EU scene tomorrow and Sunday. We will return back with the North American scene starting at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. GMT. You can do the math in the time zones. I'm not one to do math on stream. That's been Paul. <laughs> that's been Kadobi. On behalf of Bemi and, of course, our boy Panda and our producer, Capitiano, I will be calling this one off. I've been I Hold Shift. Until tomorrow, hope that you all keep holding it down. Later, later. Bye-bye.